Lastly, problem types, and I'll give you some examples here. Okay, there are three basic kinds of trig identity proofs that require very slightly different approaches. Okay, so the most straightforward one is the one you will see ninety percent of the time. You've seen them already. It's where you have something of this form. Okay. You've got a left-hand side, you've got a right-hand side. One side is clearly the side you're supposed to go towards because it's all simplified and nice and neat. And then the other side is a mess. And you're like, oh, this is the one I should start on. You just have to choose it carefully. And then just go to the other side. So 90% of the trigger identities you'll get look like this. So all you have to do is make the right choice. That's okay. But there are two other kinds of versions and I'll show you what to do with them. The first one is this one. Okay, what you end up getting is something where both sides look like they've been really nicely simplified and you're like, well, there's no obvious place to start, right? Let me give you an example. I'll do this over here. Can you write down this one with me? Some of you may actually have seen it already. It looks like this. Okay. Now, with this, because I just clued you into it, there is something that you could do that you're immediately like, oh, okay, I should try this. But it's not obvious at all which side you should start from. They both look pretty simple, even though you can, can start to tease things apart. Okay, So let me show you how this is going to play out. I'm going to begin with the left-hand side. I should have said, if this is what I required to prove. I'm going to begin with the left. And because I've seen this question before, I'm going to go directly to where I need to go. So maybe you don't see this immediately, but that's okay. It's just for the purposes of illustration, okay? I notice that those two things on the denominator, if I think about what they are, right, what they represent, these are ratios, right? Uh, or reciprocals and a ratio. This one is one over cos, and this one is sine over cos. So I see, oh, both of them have an over cos in there, right? So I can simplify that out and get rid of those by multiplying the top and the bottom by cos theta. Do you see that? That'll make things a bit neater for me. So I'm going to write that here. You see, I have not changed the fraction. I've just made it an equivalent fraction, but it will make my functions slightly easier to deal with. Okay? So numerator is nice and simple. That's all good. On the denominator, sec times cos is 1 over cos times cos. So that is 1. Tan theta is sine over cos. So sine over cos times cos is sine. Now at this point you're thinking, hmm, I know where I'm going. This doesn't look helpful at all. I'm meant to have like two things on a numerator and no denominator. So what am I going to do with this? Okay. Again, I'm going to show you something which is not obvious to begin with, but you'll see why I'm relating it to this point. Again, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by something. The thing I'm going to choose is 1 minus sine theta. Now, the question you're, many of you will be begging is, how on earth did you think to do that? Where does that come from? I'll explain that in a second. Let's just see what happens. Okay? On the numerator, what do you get? cos theta, and I'm actually just going to leave it factorized. You don't really gain very much by um, multiplying through, because it's not like these two simplify with each other. You just get a mess. What about the denominator? One minus one squared. I have difference of squares here, don't I? These two here are sort of conjugates, aren't they? So this is going to become one minus sine squared. Now it's starting maybe to unravel in your mind. That denominator, I can use one of the identities that I recognize. Which one? This is a version of the Pythagorean identity. Do you remember? The one that I think is most helpful to recall is this one. This is the primary one. But you can see I only need to rearrange this a teeny bit. Subtract sine theta, sine squared theta from both sides. And you're like, oh, there it is. Right? So I would classify this as, oh, this is a version of the Pythagorean identity. So down here I can write cos theta, 1 minus sine theta on cos squared. Are you happy with that? Okay, now I'm actually not going to finish this out because I think you can actually, number one, I've run out of space on the board. Number two, I think you can see where this is going, can't you, right? 
I'm going to lose the cos theta up the top, which means I lose one of the cos thetas down the bottom. What does that leave me with once I simplify things out? Yeah, the 1 over cos becomes sec. The sine over cos becomes tan, and you're home. Okay? Now, here's what I want to point out that's interesting about this question, and it's different from this kind. Okay? When it's easy to hard, you just think, okay, I'm just going to simplify down as far as I can. But in this case, on not one but two occasions, I had to make things messier before they became neater. Does that make sense? Um, the analogy I like to draw this to is if you've ever had to clean up your desk, right? and most of us do not have very clean desks, your room becomes a lot messier, like stuff just goes from the desk to the floor, right? It's just everywhere. So things have to get messier. You have to sort of rearrange things before you can actually say, oh, this belongs in this pile, this belongs in the cupboard, whatever. Okay? So now I want you to help me think. This one was easier. What was the clue that told me I should multiply through by this? Yeah, sure. It's like you would cancel out the fractions. Okay, so I'm trying to get rid of these fractions here. That's the first thing. Even though this, some would argue, is messier than this, that's the first clue that gave me to do that. Okay. Eric, hey, do you have a question or a thought? Well, yeah, the, the, the multiplying by cos on cos, mm -hmm. you don't need to do that. Because if you just expanded the two, then you get, what is it? Um, one, one over cos plus sine over cos. Yeah, you get one plus sine all over cos, and that's over one, and so you flip it around. Yeah, so you'd get to this eventually, wouldn't you? You'd still end up with the same thing I did, yeah? yeah? I find that that would work. However, I will avoid like the plague because I see students making so many problems with it. I'm dealing with fractions on fractions. I want to avoid that wherever I can because students tend to mess that up. But you will get the same thing if you do it, if you execute it correctly. Okay. All right, now we have an idea of why to do this. What about this one? This is much less obvious. What clues in the question tell you this is where I've got ahead? This, I can think of at least two. You're, yeah. you're trying to get to a point where you can use your uh, identity. Okay, number one, you think at this point here, when this is what I've got written, my regular strategies have failed me, right? I've gotten down to sines and cosines, I've simplified out whatever I can, and then I'm like, Meh. it's as simple as it gets, right? So I've got to search for some other identities that I can use, okay? That's good, but it's not the most helpful because as we progress, you're going to learn more and more and more of these, and you're going to be like, which one am I supposed to use? There is something that's a little more obvious that tells you I've got to, I've got to multiply by something like this. Any suggestions? Yeah, Jake, what do you think? Well, you don't want a denominator, so you try to look what makes one. Very good. So what Jake has done is he's been looking at what he finishes with. And there's no denominator here, full stop. Okay? So this denominator is here, that is here right now, it's got to go in some way, some shape, some form. Okay? So therefore, in order to get rid of it, I've got to multiply this guy with, by something in order to manipulate it. And I can see, oh, there's a cos theta on the top, maybe that's going to do some cancelling for me on the bottom. And that's what leads me to think, I should use the Pythagorean identity here. Okay? Uh, this happens frequently. You're going to introduce, you have to, going to have to recognise the Pythagorean identity sort of hiding there, sort of stealthily, sort of underneath <coughs> the covers. And you've got to multiply something by something to bring it out. Okay? The first thing I'll point out is, actually this question is not as hard as it looks. Um, once you see the solution, you'll be like, oh, okay. I can manage that. But then again, you only see how easy something is after you have the answer, not before. So it's no use to you right now that actually there is an easy solution to it if you can't see it. So when you've got something of this form, and I'm not even going to solve it for you, I'm just going to give you the main strategy. It's not obvious which place to start. And no matter which side you start on, you're going to do what we did before. You're going to start simplifying, <laughs> right? Bless you. And you're not going to get to the other side because this is not simple, right? So therefore, what are you going to do? Here's my suggestion. I need a bit of space. Um, if both sides are hard, if both sides are hard, just start with either side. It, it doesn't matter, right? Um, you're going to have to be able to do some simplifying in either case. So just underneath your, your dot point there for hard to hard, I would say step one is start on either side. Okay, if they're both hard, doesn't matter. You can do something. You can recognize some identities. You can expand something. Start on either side. Go as far as you can. Simplify out as many things as possible. 
If you can't see any obvious path like we did before, like Jake mentioned, oh, I've got to get rid of the denominator. If you can't see that, don't worry. Just like get to this point, and then if you don't see anything else, just stop. Okay, go as far as you can. Okay. Then after that, try the other side. Okay. Now I'm going to give a proviso on this. You're not finished yet, right? Presumably, if the other side is also hard, you will start to simplify. And eventually, they should connect. You should get exactly the same thing on both sides. Wait, that's not solving it. Okay? No, no, you're right. Okay? So here's what I mean. Here's what my proof would actually look like. I'd like you to write this just underneath. Okay? Um, you're required to prove a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Okay, so this is what you get presented with. So you're like, meh, I'll just flip a coin. Let's start with the left. Okay, you start to simplify. Eventually, you get down to some simple version of the left-hand side. Okay, and you're like, now I don't see anything. This will be the main thing that's the problem. Just like with geometry proofs, you're like, I just can't, I know there's something in there. I just can't see which angles I'm supposed to work with or which sides or whatever. So you get to this point and you are stuck. That's okay, no problem. Over here on the right-hand side, aside from my normal working, I'm going to start on the right-hand side. I'm going to start to work with it. And presumably, if you do things right, you should get this, the simple left-hand side. Okay? So you'll boil down to something. Um, in fact, both of these things here, both of these things here, you can prove that both of them Actually, all of the trig functions actually cancel out, and you just get left with n plus 1, which is a bit weird. Okay? So you can simplify this guy, you'll end up here. You'll simplify this guy, you end up at the same spot. You haven't finished your proof. Now that you know you can get from the right-hand side to this simple version, well, that means you can go in the reverse direction. right? You can go from this to that. You just literally reverse your steps, and you attach it to the main body of your proof. Right? So these steps over here, you can just do them in reverse. These guys over here. And then you will actually end up on your right-hand side. Okay? The reason why this is more successful is because we're good at simplifying. We can do that. Our overall strategies that I mentioned before, you will get better and better and better at them. So going in this direction is fine. But once you've gone in that direction, now you have all your steps. You just have to put them in the opposite order. Okay? So I'm going to write here, reverse. And then of course you'll end at the right hand side because that's where you started. All right? So these are it. Like I said, in most cases this is what you'll get. But you guys are extension students. Uh, what we've been dealing with so far are still just the two unit identities. So you'll frequently see these as extension students in an exam which is designed to test the harder versions of the two unit identities. Okay? A little later, um, this term, we'll move on to the identities that are explicitly extension only. But we're not quite there yet, so be watchful for these guys, which are a bit trickier.